Thank you, bro. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Mavis Esna Magbenyo, the lead for Team Trust. And on behalf of uh, my team, we would have to want to say thank you to Dr. Jacobs Abbey. We want to say thank you to the Jagos management. We would want to say thank you to our lecturers, our mentors, the judges, and of course, the guests. We are so grateful for this wonderful um, program, the Executive Strategic Learning Masterclass. We hope that everything that we've learned, we'll put it into practice. Now, our question is the current class of ESLM ends in April. As consultants, what should happen to your class in the overall vision of Jagels? And then we know the vision of Jagels to be to develop ethical, responsible, and civic-minded leaders who contribute positively to their local and global communities for positive and constructive purposes. Now, what we are going to discuss today is the gap between traditional leadership training and the evolving business environment. Now, what is traditional leadership? It is also known as the top-down type of leadership, which reflects authoritarian approach. Now, if you are um, an autocratic leader, all, you, all autocratic leaders do is to command and demand their employees to do what they want them to do. They don't care whether it is in the favor of the employees or not. They don't care whether their employees are up to the game or not. They, they, what they want them to do is what they do. Now let's go back to before and after COVID. Before COVID, people really didn't like social media. But then when COVID came, we all saw that social media is, is good. Social media sells sells products, social media is where people do a lot of adverts, which sells more than the television because in, when people are sitting in their cars, when people are um, in their offices, they are always on social media. So social media sells a lot. So if you are a traditional leader and then you didn't like social media and then you are holding on to the fact that social media is still not good, then it will not help your business because you will not be selling a lot on social media. Now let's go to the gap between the, the, the two. The first one is to increase in complexity. There's a lot of competition now. And so we don't have just um, one-sided type of business. And so if, if you are not um, up to the game, then it means that you are, you are lacking behind. Then technology has also advanced. We are having online meetings now. And so leaders need to have broader skills and knowledge to meet demands of today's evolving business. And the other one is employee and customer expectations. The employees and customers um, expect a lot from your business. And so if you are an autocratic leader and then you are bringing down to not that to today's um, evolving business, then you will be lacking. Um, leaders need to be able to adapt to these changes, changing expectations and lead teams that can effectively um, respond to these, these changes. Now, let, please let's go to the proposals. We are proposing some few things. We propose the establishment of an advisory board made up of experts who know knows, um, the modern day practices to share knowledge with the next cohorts. We are talking of experts in diverse fields to guide the institution's strategic directions. In addition, we suggest a thorough analysis in, of industry trends, feedbacks from past participants in collaboration there are other organizations offering leadership programs. We could have collaborations um, with other leadership schools to share the experiences, to know how they're using um, what they have learned in their current work and then vice versa. Now we can attest to the fact that in the past, in Ghana here, when you go to, for example, when you go to hospitals, you'd have to be holding your folder and then papers and all that, moving from one department to the other, from the cons um, consulting room to the laboratory and all that. But today, it has the business ha business has evolved so much so that when you move from the um, from the reception before you get to the doctor's office, 
your information is already in the doctor's office because the computers have been networked. So if you're a traditional leader and you are still holding on to the fact that um, please take your folder to the laboratory, then you are lacking behind and you will not have people coming to, to your businesses. So our recommendation is to expand the reach of the ESLM program through partnership with other academic institutions. The, the other one is to develop an alumni network to encourage ongoing learning and engagement in the institution. Now, who are our, our stakeholders? Our stakeholders are, is, um, the first one is ESLM participants, management of juggles, leadership mentors, um, other academic um, institutions, and ESLM um, alumni. Then what are the benefits of bridging the gap between the traditional leadership training and the evolving business environment? The first one is to improve leadership skills. Um, lecturers um, has to improve to be able to give more to subsequent cohorts. The next one is to increase productivity and efficiency. Of course, there's no way that someone will come to any of us and talk about um, um, which school he or she wants to attend to gain um, leadership knowledge and will not mention juggles. Yes, it will be juggles all the way. Another benefit is better business outcome. When you involve your employees in your business and, and you, you listen to their views, of course, there's business and um, better business outcome. The next one is to en enhance reputation. The next one is stronger alumni network. Of course, when I joined Juggles, I, I have had to um, communicate with a lot a lot of people that I didn't know of, and we've had very good conversations, and then it, it's a move forward from here. In week four, Dr. Chibuna had mentioned that um, as a leader, you should see your employees as partners of your business, make their decisions count and allow them to share their views. And it is very, very critical as a leader if you want your business to, to progress and proceed. And of course, I can attest to that because in my NGO at Girls Excellence Movement, our founder and executive director, Juliana Amakolofia, will always bring us on board when she wants to make decisions for them. She, she would always want our views when she is making decisions for them. And it has helped us a lot. And she is a leader that when you go to her today and you ask about what is happening and what is the latest in business, whatever you ask her, she would even be able to give you more than you have asked her. So yes, I can attest to that. In conclusion, we want to say that as a leader who wants progress in today's business environment, the world is moving at a very, very, very fast pace. And so we want to see that we want to say that you, you as a leader should also move accordingly because if you don't do that, you'll be stagnant and stagnation is very bad. And don't be a leader who is stagnant. The leadership training should meet what is in the business environment today. We would like to say thank you to um, our lecturers for uh, making time out of their busy schedules to share their experiences with us. Thank you, Dr. Jacobs Abe. Thank you, Professor Jared Onyari. Thank you, Dr. Chibuna Uwobi. Thank you, Professor Ama Bochie, Engineer Caroline Ngati, Professor Bintu Diallo. We are so grateful for your time and sharing your experiences with us. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much, uh, Team Trust. Uh, that's uh, a very powerful presentation on behalf of Team Trust. Uh, judges, any direct Good afternoon, questions? everyone, wherever you are. Uh, thank you for the presentation and the event that we have today. Um, my question to Team Trust. You discussed about the traditional leadership in Ghana. And uh, my question is, why, why Ghana? How did you select Ghana for this specific leadership topic? Good question. Thank you very much. Juggles is in other countries, and then we decided to, we did um, balloting and then we selected um, Ghana as um, one of the countries that we would want to talk to. That is why we chose Ghana. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, all right, so guys, um, I think that uh, we want to, uh, Dr. Chibuna has a question for Team Trust. 
Uh, Dr. Chibuna, please go ahead. Yes. Um, first of all, let me start from um, suggest suggestion. Now that um, when you decided to choose Ghana, you would have told us initially that here yeah, there were so many countries, but th this presentation is going to be based on Ghana so that we you know. Because I was thinking about the same thing. I said, hmm, you know, looking at your topic, I was just looking at the relationship between your topic and the country of Ghana. Another thing is based on the project topic here. What should happen to your class in the overall vision of um, Jagger? I did not see that. If I am getting the right, that's it, right? The current that's class it. of ESLM ends in April as, as consultants. What should happen to your class in the overall vision of Jagger? I need an answer. All right. Um, to answer the question, you realize that Mavis was talking about um, there should be a network between the ESLM participants, the management of Jagger, the leadership mentors, other academic institutions, and the alumni, you realize that when there's networking, all these people, all these institutions and people come together, and we would look at the continuity of the Jagger's program, since it has affected positively in all our endeavors, be it um, wherever you find yourself, at the health sector, at the um, security sector or at the government sector. So we all need to come together so that we can see the sustainability of these policies from Jagger's. And that is it. All right. Thank you very much uh, for the clarification uh, to our, our team. Uh, we are grateful as well. All right. So uh, at this time,